Hey everybody, it's Craig Vector here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to retouch a portrait in Capture One 11.1. And make sure you stick around and watch the entire video because I'm gonna be sharing some secrets from my retouching workflow that I've never shared on YouTube before. And I'll also show you how you can save 10% off Capture One. All right, let's get started. So this is an image shot in natural light. We used a reflector to soften the light. It's shot in the Nikon D810. Now I'm gonna walk you through the workflow. Now you can see over here, I have the mode as shot. So the white balance is as shot. I don't really like it. I'm looking at it. It looks a little bit green. I did a custom white balance in camera and it just, you know, it didn't work out. So if you can see here, I have different options. If I go to sunny, it's starting to look a little bit better. So here's some of your options, your modes. You have sunny, flash, cloudy. I look at sunny and I think that's a little closer, but maybe a little too warm. I'm going to go 5100 for that. Now the tint, if we go a little left here, you can see it gets a little more green. If we go right, it's a little more magenta. I think the little more magenta suits this image. I'm gonna start at about a two. I'm gonna click on it there. And I like that a little bit, but there's still a little bit too much green there. I think I'm gonna go up to a four. I'll have a look at that. I think it might be a little too warm. I'm gonna go with a three. So that's basic uh, white balance adjustments that I make by eye. Now you can see here we have our color balance. I like to save that to the end for color grading. Now you can see we have our color editor here. Now what I'm gonna do is try to even out the skin tones, but what I'll do is I'll put the skin tones on another layer. So if you come here, we see a little plus symbol here, new layer. If you click on that, we can create a new layer. But if you right click, you could see you have choices for new empty layer, new filled layer, clone layer, heal layer. Now you can use the clone or heal to do some cloning on the skin. We're gonna start off with just neutralizing the skin tone, trying to get a more even skin tone. So I'm gonna go with new empty layer. Now, if you wanna delete any of these, you can just highlight them and then hit the delete key. So if they're in orange, you can delete them that way. So I'm gonna say new empty layer, and then I'll call this skin right here. So I'll probably do one for the skin and one for the hair. Now we're gonna be on the skin here. So what I wanna do is create a mask for the skin so that all these adjustments only affect the skin. Now I wanna hit B, for the brush key. Now if I right click once I'm on the brush key, you can see I can control the size of my brush. I can also use the bracket keys and I can control the hardness as well. So I think I'll go with about a hardness for 30, opacity 100, flow, and then I'll click off that pen pressure there. Now what I wanna do is create this mask. Now if you try to draw a mask and you don't see it, you'll have to hit the M key. Now I'm not seeing it. So if I hit the M key, now I can see the mask. Now, if I wanted to change this, if I went to preferences here, if I click on preferences, you can see we have general appearance, image, capture. And so what we can do is we can also change the color of our mask if we want to. So you can see we have the appearance and mask color right here. So if I go to mask color, if I wanted to make the mask green, I could click there and then our mask would be green. So let's just draw here. Now you can see it's green. So it might be a little easier when working with skin tones if you pick a color that's different than some of the tones that would be in the skin. So what I'll do is I'll just go around here as close as I can. I don't want to really affect the hair, but I just want to affect the skin tones. Now there's a couple different tricks. You can fill this mask, for example. I'll show you how to do that. We'll just fill this top part and then I'll just draw it in the bottom. So you just see a couple of different ways that you can do this. But what we can do here is if I right click over on the layer here, I could say fill mask and it'll just fill that mask right there. Now what also I can do is I can just dry in the entire mask if I wanted to as well. I just didn't want to really affect the hair too much or that neck band. So I had to kind of separate it that way as well. Now once I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an area of the skin because now this is going to happen if your model has a lot of makeup or your client has too much makeup or too much blush, you could sort of help sort of blend those tones a little bit better than you would any other way, in my opinion. So again, I think what I could do is, I think I'll just put fill mask. It'll just save me some time right there. And I think this is good enough for what we're doing here as far as the skin tones go. Now, if I wanna get rid of that mask, it looks a little green, I can just hit the M key and that'll disappear. Now, what I can do now is if we go over to color editor, skin tone, you can see this tool right here. Now, what I wanna do is choose an area of skin that I think looks natural. Obviously, if I pick here, you can see she has blush on her cheek. We don't wanna pick an area like that. We don't wanna pick too light of an area 
that doesn't represent the skin tone as well. If I went down here, it might be a little bit, you know, inappropriate. I think if we pick something right around here, now what we can do, now if you see here the circle, is we've pinpointed a skin tone. Now what I can do is I can extend this a little more, and I could even go a little bit more this way, and a little bit more that way. And now we can affect this entire area with our adjustments. Now what we should start with is the hue. Now watch what happens when I go to the left. You could see that actually we've got more reds that are affected. And then if I go to the right, you can see it's a little bit more green. So I want to find kind of a nice color that I like, and then that's our starting point. And so I think this is too far. So 0.5 too far, I'd say somewhere in the middle there, maybe minus 2.5 is a good starting point. Now you can see the saturation. If I go to the right, the skin becomes more saturated. If I go to the left, it becomes desaturated. So we have to make a choice at this point if we want more or less skin saturation. Now if I go to the right, you know, I don't really mind that too much, but I don't want to go too crazy either. So maybe I'll go with, say, 0.4. It's pretty good right there. Maybe just a little more, actually. Maybe 1.2. Now the lightness, this one doesn't affect it as much as the uniformity adjustments. You'll see that in a second. But this will allow us to either brighten the skin up or darken. And I think I want to keep this pretty much close to maybe just a little boost right there. Now here's the uniformity. Now if we take this and we go to the right, you could see it takes that one skin tone we sampled and it affects everything. And in, in fact, I realize I made some mistakes here. I'll have to fix the mask because the mask is affecting her eyes and her lips. And you can see that in this right here. So I think what I'll do is let me fix that mask. So I'm going to go to M. We're going to call up that mask. And then if I hit the E key, then we can erase that. And if I use the bracket keys, I can make this smaller. So I want to make sure that her eyes aren't affected by this adjustment. So I'll make sure that that is clear, her eyes are clear. And it looks funny, doesn't it? <laughs> and then I'm going to cl clear this eye. I'm going to make it a little smaller because I don't want her eyebrows affected by this adjustment as well. And I'll just fix that up a bit there. And I'll also clear her lips. So good thing that happened. I realized that uh, I had chose too large an area and we don't want that to be normalized or not normalized, but we don't want that to be treated the same way as the skin tone would be treated. So we'll hit the M key and we'll just see that again. I think I'll start here with the eye, make sure I get that part as well. And we're just going to go over the eye a bit more and just make sure that the eyes are not affected by this adjustment at all. And a little bit more on the eye there. And the lips, let me just see the lips again. Make sure I've got those. I think I've got those pretty good right there. And the eyebrows, I think we're good enough there. So that's a better mask right there with the M key. And then again, we'll make our adjustments. And then what we can do here is you see this backwards arrow. If I hit the Option key or the Alt key on the PC right here, we can see a before. So that's before. And then that's after. So a slight improvement. I think we can improve on that a little more. So let's see what happens when we move our uniformity slider for the hue. Not really liking what's happening there. So I'll just go minimal on the two. And then the saturation, you can see we can bring in some more saturation. It doesn't have a strong effect when you're dealing with the uniformity, but the lightness you'll see as we do this, it really lightens the face way too much and takes all dimension out. So I really don't want to touch that. Now, I don't think I'm happy with my original selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here again. I'm going to pick another area of skin tone that I think is a little bit more appropriate. And I think what I'll do is pick this area right here on her neck. And then, so we're starting with this area again. I'll just broaden this area. So it's a little bit of trial and error until you get something that looks natural to your eye. And so we'll start here again with the hue. Again, when I go to the right, it's a little too yellow. And if I go to the red, it's a little too magenta. I think I'm going to go with about a 3.5 in that area. Again, the saturation, that takes all the saturation out. That brings too much in. And I think it's pretty good. I think I'll get a little closer to what we had originally, which would be zero. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the lightness. Now, if we move the hue over, it's still not the greatest, but I think what we'll do is we'll give it about a 10 right there, close to 10. The saturation again, if we pull it to the right, it doesn't do too much. I think we'll go with about a six. The lightness I'm going to leave. Now, if we go to the option key and we go back here, you can see the original skin tone. 
and you can see the new one. I think it looks a little bit better, although the saturation I think can come down just a touch now that I look at it. And we'll bring the saturation down on both a little bit more. Option key. So you can see that it's a little bit of trial and error going back and forth until you find something that you like. So that's before, that's after. I'm still not liking that, you know, the more I look at it. So I'm going to do this again. And I'm really just trying to find a tone that really looks natural to me. So let's try the forehead here. Let's see how that affects it. You can see the tones here. And we'll just leave all the adjustments the same. We'll just go back and forth. So that's before. It's a little greeny yellow. And to me, that looks like a more natural skin tone. Although you can see some red here. So let's just play with that just a bit here. So if we go like this with the hue, you can see it sort of makes it a little more yellow. And I think maybe if I go about minus three on the hue, we take our saturation down to about minus 1.7. We get our lightness to about zero. And again, if I use my uniformity slider, you can see that it's sort of evening things out. And now that I have a better tone, I think I'll go with about a 20 on there, 22. And we'll hit the option key and we'll look at before and after. So she's a little greeny yellow. And I think she's a little bit more improved there. So it's a little bit of doing this by eye and taste until you get the desired results. But you can even out the skin tone and make it look a little more natural. And again, I think I'll just sort of back off this a little bit more. And that's how I would do the skin tone. So once you get better at this, it's going to be a little faster for you. And then you could apply these similar adjustments to other images. So I think I'm happy with that. Although the next thing that really stands out to me is the background is the background is a lot brighter. So what I'm going to do is create another layer. I'll go here, right click, and I'll say new empty layer. And we'll make sure the mask key is enabled. We'll hit B for the brush key. I'll make the brush a little bit bigger so we can do this a little more quickly. And what I'll do is I'm going to mask out this background. Now what we could do is we could also change the color of this mask if we felt that the background was green and it was getting in the way. And I'm not going to go crazy with this mask. I just want to bring this background down a bit and not affect the hair at all. And then I'll show you an adjustment to the hair as well once we finish this mask here. And I think I went too far. I'll make the brush a little smaller in this area and then I'll just tweak the hair. And so that's just the bracket key is a quick way to adjust the brush size. And I'll just paint this in here. So while I'm doing this, if you want to save 10% off of Capture One, it also works on upgrades. Use the coupon code AMBCRAIG. That's the discount voucher code AMBCRAIG on checkout. And that will save you 10% off Capture One and your upgrades as well. And I'll put a code just below in the description box. All right, so we've almost got this mask. I think what I'll do is just go in like this and then I'll fix it on the hair. That might be faster. All right, so what you can do too is if you hit the B key and you're on the brush key, if you right click, you can see we can make some quick adjustments here. And so what I'll do is I think I'll bump up the hardness here and I'll just refine this mask and I'll just make it this way. And then what I'll do is I'm using the left bracket key. I'm gonna hit the E key for erase. And then what I want to do is just take it off the hair because we just want to affect the background. So what I'm going to do here is just take down the background. So this video is in real time, obviously. <laughs> but uh, the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it. And this probably isn't the best way to do it, but I'm just kind of showing you how to use the tools as we go as well. And using the green here is helpful because it's really easy to spot if it's on the hair or on the face. And... Uh, we're just going to try to get this a little more refined and then I'll show you how to take that down. Now there's a number of adjustments that you can use in order to affect the background. There's exposure, there's brightness. So make sure it's not on her shoulder or her sleeve here and we should be good to go. All right, so we'll just hit the M key so you don't see the mask. Now we're on this layer here. I'll call this one background. You just click on it and then you can relabel it. And so that's labeled background now. Now you can see here, if we go to the next section, we have our exposure, our brightness, we have shadows. Now this shadows only brings out the shadows. And this is the highlight that only sort of dulls the highlights. That's not going to work for us. I think a good thing we can do is we can adjust, like I said, exposure. So just bringing that down. And here's where you can see how we can refine our mask. If I hit the M key, 
it's pretty apparent there that I need to refine that. And then I'll just make this a little, little bit better. And then what we'll do is we can use what they call, uh, click the E, is refine mask. So click the E again. I don't want to erase that. I want to put a mask on that. So hitting the B key, I was on erase. What I'll do is I'll refine this mask and it should tweak things in around her hair a little bit better. So good thing I did that. Realized that I made a mistake on the mask and we'll fix it right here and right about here. And you can see when we make those big exposure adjustments, it really makes a difference. So I'll go to the background, I'll right click and I'll say refine mask and then I'll say apply. And then you can see it just softens it along the hairline. Now what we'll do again is we'll hit erase and we'll just make sure it's off the hair. But when we get close to the hair border, we'll leave it alone so that it's kind of a fine feathering. That way it shouldn't be affected too much by the adjustments. So that's a way to just refine your mask if you found out that it was a little bit too harsh like we had it originally. So that's pretty good right there. And I'll just tweak this a little bit more as we get to the hairline. And you can also feather the mask as well. That's another option that you have. Let me just clear that hair up right there. And I'll just make my brush smaller again, left bracket key. And then I'll just clear that one area up right there. And then on the shoulder, the bracket key. And we'll just sort of fix that a little bit more. And I think we're pretty good right there. I'm not too concerned with the lower parts of her garments. So M to get rid of that mask. And then again, now you can see that's a little bit closer of a mask. But I think the exposure adjustment, that might be a little too harsh. I'm going to go with zero here. And there's another way we can do this. So I mentioned the brightness. So you can bring the brightness down a bit. That looks a little more natural to me. Also, too, you can use a curve. If you see here our RGB curve, we can go to Luma. And I can just bring down the darks a little bit, too. Now, those are different ways that we can adjust that. Now, if you want to go back, you just hit the backwards arrow. I think of all the adjustments I liked was the brightness. So by bringing the brightness slider down just a bit, I'd say we could even go a little more. So let's go if we could see. All right, so it's bringing down everything but her face. So I think if we go with about a minus, let's just say minus 15 and have a look at it. Well, about minus 15, option key, backwards arrow. And you could see there that it sort of brings that back down. And I think maybe we could even go maybe minus 12. I don't want to go too crazy there. Now, if we want to see any of those adjustments too, we could just click on the check mark. So background. And another thing too is we can adjust the opacity of that layer. So if we got that sort of almost right, and we said, well, you know, let's just back it off a little bit. We could do that with that adjustment slider right there. So we can also look at the background and the skin to see the differences on different layers. So those are some of the adjustments that you can do in a retouch. Now you can also do hair. So you've seen me draw a couple of masks, but you would do the same process. You would create a mask for the hair and then you could bring up the shadows in the hair. Let's just do that anyway, just for one more experiment. So I'm going to say B, that's our brush key. Again, I can right click this and then adjust the hardness. I think I want to make this a little softer. So we'll go about 20 right there. And then again, the bracket keys, I could go left or again, I could right click and I could adjust the brush size. So what I'll do is I'll create another mask. I'm going to come over here, right click. I'm going to say new empty layer and we'll call this one hair. And that's our hair layer. And again, that's on its own layer. And so now we can start painting this in. Of course, I can't see it. I hit the M key and now we can see the green layer. And also we can refine or feather this mask. And we can also use those fill commands. So for example, if I just outline the hair here, I'll just go around, outline the hair. Then we can create a fill layer as well for the hair. And then when we get close to the face, we could just sort of feather that or back that off. Now the idea of this is, I think I've lost some of the detail in the hair. So what I want to do is just bring up the hair in certain areas where it's darker. And it's pretty much dark everywhere. So I'm going to right click here and I could say fill mask right there and it'll fill our mask. Now I can also right click. I think I want to fix this part here a little bit. 
And then what I can say is right click and I could say refine mask and then say apply. And then that will refine her mask. So you see how it filled out her hair. And then I can see that her throat little bracelet there. So what I want to do is hit the E key. I want to make sure my brush is small enough. And then I just want to get rid of that part there. So I don't want that to be affected. And then you can see I have some on her face here. So I just want to make my brush smaller and make sure that that's not affected. So I don't want any green on her face. I just want that. So it does normally a pretty good job, but you could see that it requires a little bit of refining when it comes to her face. But overall, this cutout here, it's probably going to work for me. I just want to make sure that her face is not affected by these adjustments that I'm making to her hair. So I'm just going to just go by and just refine this a little bit more, back it up. And you can see that it takes a little bit of effort to do these fine details, but it's like that just about with any retouching program. It's really hard whenever you get to something like hair it's very difficult to really get the hair cut out and just about any editing program. So it's going to take a little bit of extra work in order to get the fine details. But I think that's pretty good right there for what I want to do. I just want to just back that off her face a little bit more. And so the goal here is I just felt like the hair lost some detail. There's just too much um, of the shadows that were affected. So I want to make sure that I've got a good mask on the hair so that I can just affect that now. I'll just back that up just a bit here too. That should be fine. And then maybe a little bit on the garment here. This is a little bit affected here. Let's make sure that that's not affected. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this painstaking detail in this, <laughs> this real-time tutorial. But it's, it's, you know, I'm just trying to give you little tips as we go. All right, so I think that's a pretty good mask. I'm just going to hit the M key. Now again, we can adjust the hair different ways. Now one way that I might do this where we can adjust the exposure or the brightness or the curve. If we just want to bring up the shadow detail, we can bring up the shadow slider. And you can see there that we're just bringing up the shadow detail in the hair and nowhere else. So this is very specific. By creating a mask, we're not affecting the jacket because I don't necessarily want to bring any emphasis to the jacket, just a little bit more to the hair. Now we could do this with the eyes as well if we wanted to. And so I think I'll just bring this to about, let's say we bring it to about 15. And I just hit the Option key or Alt on the PC. I hit the backwards arrow associated with this, so High Dynamic Range. If I click that and click here again, now we can see we have more detail in just the hair. I think what I'll do is maybe bring it to about 11. Now I'll just say right here, we'll just click here also and adjust just the hair layer. So that's off and that's on. And then we got the background. And then we have the skin. So you can see I can go through these different ones. So we could say we've got the skin evened out a little more. We've got the background darkened. We've got the hair a little lightened. Now that I see the hair, I think what I'll do is take the shadow detail down just a little bit more. So you can see we can individually affect different layers. And so what I'll do is I think I'm going to do the eyes next. I was going to try to keep this video short, but it's just flowing pretty good right now. So I'll just keep going. I'm going to say eyes. And so we're just going to create a mask for the eyes now. Now, one thing too, if you're dealing with smaller areas, if you hit Command Plus on the Mac, you can zoom in to get a little more detailed and a little bit more accurate. I should have mentioned that earlier. So again, I'm adjusting my brush size with the bracket key. The left bracket key makes it smaller. And then I'm going to create a mask right here on the eyes. So again, M, and I just want to affect the eyes. All right, I just made a mistake. I was on the Erase key. So I want to make sure I'm on the B key and then I'm just going to make that smaller and then you can see my mask. So if you run into that and you previously had the erase enabled, make sure that you check that. That was a mistake that I made. I had erase and then when I went to go draw, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see the mask. Now I'm hitting E again. I just want to refine that eye a little bit there and it was on the Okay, I just want to make sure that that's a good mask. And I just want to fix that a little bit there. So I only want to affect the brightness of the eye. And so I've refined that. Hit the M key again. Now we have different ways again. Now I always find exposure is maybe a little too drastic. 
So I'll make sure that that's at zero. And we could try the brightness tool. And it's going to be a combination, I think. I think what I'll do is, let's just see the brightness and how that affects the hue and the saturation of the eye. And then we'll compare it to, okay, so I'm going to say option. And I'm going to click off and on. Now let's compare that to the exposure slider. So that's at zero. We'll go to the exposure. And let me think what, in the comments there, let me know what you think, what looks better. So here's the exposure. I'll take that up so we can see it. So we've lifted that up by more than one stop in the eye. Now let's go back to zero and let's see what you think. What looks better to you? Is it the exposure or the brightness? Now let's bring the brightness up. I think the brightness to me looks a little more natural. We've got the brightness at 20 option and so it's a little too bright i think we'll go with about a brightness of about 15. and then if we zoom out we can see how it affects the entire image let's just click on the eyes and so our eyes are pretty dark originally it might be a little too bright let's just go on the brightness take it down to about maybe 10. and then click on the eyes here and so you can see this is just one way of working on an image by evening out the skin tone, by taking the background down, by adjusting the hair, the eyes. Now again, you can create a dodge and burn layer. We could create a heel layer. I'll just demonstrate a heel layer for you. So if we right click, you can see here we have a choice between clone or heel. I'll click heel and it says repair layer one. I'm just gonna zoom in and I'll show you how this works here. So command plus, and then you can see here we have some stray hairs on the forehead. So what I would do is I would make my brush smaller. I want it a little bit bigger than the hair. And then I would say, I'll make it bigger so you can see it. I would click option. So for skin tone nearby. And then what I can do is I can just paint over that hair and then it should fix itself. Now I think the problem is that I was on a race. So let's try that again, option. And then I can draw over the hair. Now you can see it's working. And you can see that it's sampled there. I don't like how that worked. So I'm going to say edit, undo. I don't like how that worked. So let me just sample the skin again. And we'll make our area smaller. So I'll click here and I'll just go from here to here. Because what you'll find is when you're in an area where it goes from bright to dark, you'll have to sample the nearby areas. If you sample a bright area and then just draw from light to dark, when it gets to the dark area, it's not going to blend as well as it should. So that's how you would do the repair layer for hair. And what I would do is create a number of layers based on the area. So if it's not a consistent lightness or darkness, then create multiple layers to deal with those stray hairs. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to save 10% off Capture One, all you have to do is use the coupon code AMBCRAIG. That's A-M-B-C-R-A-I-G. I'll put a link below in the description. You can download Capture One 30-day trial, test it out for yourself, and use the voucher code on checkout. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. Also, hit this like button while you're at it, and leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it on the web with your fellow photographers. Share it on Facebook, forums, wherever you hang out online. All right, thanks again for watching. It's Craig Vector here. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.